Hello everyone. In this video we're going to be solving an interesting exponential equation. Try to guess the answer and you're probably not going to be able to do it, right? Because the answer is not an integer nor is a rational number. Is it a rational? Good question. We'll explore this solution and we're also going to be looking at something very, very special. All right, so we have this type of equation. We can do a couple of things and then we're going to be, I'm going to be defining a very special type of function that we've been using for a while and then we'll use that function to solve the problem. I'm also going to show you the result from Wolfram Alpha and the graph at the end. Okay, let's get started. So first of all, it would be nice if we had e as our base, the natural log ln thing, right? But we have a two, but that can easily be fixed. Consider the fact that a can be written as e to the power ln a. We can basically write the two as e to the power ln two by definition of the exponential function. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and replace two with that. Let's do it first. That's going to give us x times e to the power ln 2 to the power x and that equals 1. Obviously it's impossible to guess the answer right away because if you test some values you're going to notice they're not integers they're not you know rational numbers so we can't really do that right away. Okay so now notice that we have two exponents so we're going to multiply them x times e to the power ln 2 times x, but I'd rather write it as x ln 2 equals 1. Now we're going to be using a special function, so let's go ahead and make sure that we focus on the exponent here, uh, which is x ln 2, and what multiplies e to the power of that? And that is x. So it will be nice if these two things were the same, for reasons that I'm going to mention a little in a little bit. So we're going to multiply both sides by ln 2. And you can always do that because ln 2 does not equal 0. It's a constant, so you can go ahead and multiply it. Let's multiply both sides by x um, ln 2, so we get x ln 2 times e to the power x ln 2, which is 1 times ln 2, which is ln 2, of course. Okay? ln is the natural log, by the way. Now, we got the same thing. That's good. So now we're going to work off of a very special function, which is called Lambert's W function, or we can just call that W. So Lambert's W function is basically the function, uh, for functional inverse of f of x equals x times e to the power x. So if f of x is defined as this, it's inverse, and obviously there's more than one inverse, depending on what interval you're looking at, that gives you multiple branches, and let's not even get into the complex branches. Anyways, so the inverse of this function, which can't be explicitly stated, but we're just going to define it as wx, which is Lambert's w. Lambert is the mathematician who worked uh, first on, uh, who worked on this type of function, and who worked on these kinds of uh, equations and solutions. So, what is that supposed to mean? Well, according to this, according to this, we can basically write this as f inverse of x e to the x equals x. So, f inverse of something can be replaced with, well, uh, I was about to say, for Lambert's w. So, we can kind of like replace this with w x e to the x, and that gives x. So, in other words, Lambert's W function is a special function such that if the input is x times e to the x, the output is going to be x. Under certain conditions, of course, sometimes there are no solutions, there are no real solutions, depending on uh, the value of x. I believe if x is greater than or equal to negative 1 over e, then we should have um, real solutions. Okay. Obviously, uh, we could also write... Uh, different identities such as wx times e to the power wx equals x. So if kind of if you kind of apply the uh, f on f inverse, um, you're basically going to be getting something that looks like this. Okay. All right. So so this is how Lambert's W is defined, and let's see how we're going to use it. Now notice that here we can do some substitution, right? So let me rewrite that here. We have x ln 2 times e to the power x ln 2 
equals ln2. Now the constant on the right hand side doesn't matter, we're just going to w it, so we're going to be good. But I want to use substitution here, so let's go ahead and replace this with t, so that this becomes t as well, and we get something like t e to the t equals ln2. Obviously this is like kind of simplifies things for now and then we have to back substitute. And now we can apply w on both sides. And why do I want to apply it? Because if you look at this identity or expression applying w to a product like x times e to the x or something it could also be like you know a star times e to the power star and if you apply w to it you're gonna get star right okay so and it, this could be an apple too anyway so that's the whole idea let's w both sides let's move this a little bit to the left i mean to the right so now we can apply the w on both sides and that's basically gonna do the trick okay now when you apply w to a product like t e to the t you get t from here so t is equal to w of ln2 or you could also call this product log. That's how Wolfram Alpha actually um, recognizes it because if you just say uh, Lambert's W, it's not going to recognize it. So it's called product log. So now T is something that we named. So T is X ln 2. If you replace X with, I mean, sorry, correction, T with X ln 2, we can get the X value from here. So it can be written as X equals w ln2 which is Lambert's w divided by ln2. So you could also generalize this if you have something like you know um, what is it called <laughs> x times e to the x or x times a to the x equals 1 then a will just replace the 2 here. Okay cool so that is the solution but the million dollar question is what is w of ln2. So that's what we're going to be looking at next According to Wolfram Alpha, unfortunately, it just names the ln or natural log as log, which I usually use for base 10. But anyways, that's just a different notation. And I think it's pretty standard uh, for college uh, textbooks. So most of them, at least. And you get the value. So W of ln2 divided by ln2 is going to be approximately 0 0.6411, so on and so forth. So we're going to see this value on the graph, right? You're going to no notice that um, that's the value I approximated it because in Desmos, I wasn't, uh, I was trying to do the um, product log, but I, I couldn't find an easy way to express it in Desmos. That's why I had to use Wolfram Alpha. If you do know of a way to express it, please let me know. Anyways, this is the graph of x times 2 to the power of x, and it, it's intersected once by the horizontal line y equals 1, that, that's why there's only one solution, and that is given by this x value, which comes from w ln 2 over ln 2. That is the numerical value of uh, our solution. Okay, and this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.